In this video, I'm going to cover the basics of backtesting a strategy with TradingView using PineScript. I wrote this three-part article a while back and I wanted to make a video covering the topics in more detail. We'll start with getting set up with writing a simple moving average crossover strategy. Then we'll advance it by adding a few more conditions and making something more usable. And before we get started, I wanted to show you this documentation here. It's a reference to the PineScript language and here you'll find anything you need to understand about uh, any variables, any built-in functions and so on that we're gonna be using throughout our code. I just opened up a basic chart here and you don't need a paid account. I just logged into TradingView and I opened up the S&P 500. And to start writing our code, all we need to do is uh, go down here to Pine Script Editor and we can start writing our first script. Let's clear out this code and give our strategy a name. And I'll use the built-in strategy function and I'll call it moving average cross. And again, any functions I'm using like this right here that you'll start seeing is all in this reference manual. So just go back to this if something's unfamiliar, you need some more understanding of it. And we'll first set a variable here and we'll call this EMA20 and this will be our uh, 20 moving average and EMA 50 and that's how we set a variable in pine script and To give these the values we'll use the built-in EMA function and this takes in two parameters at this point It's going to take in what value we want to use. So do we want to use the open high lower close as a reference point? And what's the time frame we want to use so we'll use we'll set it to close I always like to use that for my moving averages and we'll set that to a 20 time frame and the EMA 50 is going to be set at 50 right here. And now we need to set our long and short conditions. So we'll set these two variables here and we'll use, uh, we'll simply check our EMA. So when EMA 20 is above 50, that's our short position right there. And when EMA 20 is less than 50, that's when we want to go long. So this is just a variable, doesn't do anything yet, doesn't trigger any, any actions. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to set in two entry points. We want to set an entry point for when we want to go long and short. So another built-in, we want to use strategy.entry. And we're going to pass it a few values here. I'll just go ahead and pass them through and explain it in a second. Okay, so strategy.entry. We first give it a name, and then we want to say, and I have a misspell, uh, then we tell it we want to go long. So here's our name, this is what we want to do, and the amount of shares that we want to, uh, we want to purchase. And when do we want to do this? We want to do this when this condition is true. So when the 20 moving average is above the 50, go long. So every single uh, every single time point it's going to run this function and check the condition and we'll go ahead and just copy and paste that and we'll set our uh, we'll set when we want to go short so not close but sh short there okay so we want to go short and we just change that value do the same thing we want to short a thousand shares and we want to do this when this condition is true so at this point, every single, uh, every single candle, we're running these conditions and we're buying or selling or we're shorting. Uh, we want to make sure we're not always just buying. We want to actually close out a position. Uh, we want to close out a position if another one is not accurate or if it's not representing what we want to buy. So for this, we just use strategy dot close and we give this a few values to tell it when we want to close out our positions. So we reference what position we want to close out. So we use the same name right here and we want to set our win value to, uh, we want to close our long position when short is true and vice versa. So copy and paste that. We want to close out this posi position when we need to be going long right there. So, that's about all the code we need, I believe. And let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. And to do that, we just go to add to chart right here and that'll 
we're on our back test and here we go here's all our results here so we'll start with looking at this overview here's our equity curve and all the things that occurred over time and our performance summary just gives us the overview uh, in a table format here and our list of trades so you can see we went all the way back to 1970 we didn't set a time frame so it went back from the beginning of time and just bought and sold and kind of went crazy here and it looks like we have over 467 trades now the cool thing about trading view is you can actually when you want to confirm a strategy i'll just open this up you can actually go back and see exactly when these buy and sell orders were made and how long we held on to them so this is pretty neat so we start back all the way in 1907 no that's goes a lot further back than that but yeah so we can go back forever but you can see every single buy and sell condition on our chart so that's pretty cool and next we'll just go ahead and add actually a time frame so we can control this so we're not just going crazy if we want to test this over a certain period of time and so on before we start working with time we need to throw in this version number there's a few functions down the line we're going to start using that require uh, certain versions of pine script to work properly so let's go ahead and set the starting point and ending point at which point we want our back test to run so our starting point and end point we'll just set these two variables and we'll use uh, we'll use the timestamp function and we'll just set this to 2015 let's say July on the first and let's set some times here I actually don't think we need the times if we're going by days but I'll just be safe here and the ending point will use the same value and just set that to I don't know what happened here we'll just set that to 2019 okay so now all we need to do is just check a condition and see if these are allowed to run based on the starting point and ending point so let's go ahead and do that so if the time is and we'll use this built-in method if the current time is if it's greater than the starting point greater than or equal to the starting point we can run it and if it's less than the ending point we can run it okay and we just need to indent that it's pretty simple to write these conditionals in Python script let's add it to our chart alrighty looks like it works so our first trade occurred in 2015 and we end right around 2019 and let's just go ahead and see that in our chart guess it doesn't want to show it at this point so now that we have our time set let's go ahead and add a few more parameters and advance this algorithm and write something that would actually be pretty cool to use something we can actually test before we get to advancing our strategy i want to copy and paste some code here and show you how we can actually grab our moving averages here and any other custom indicators we make and plot them out so we just use this plot method we grabbed our moving averages uh, give them a name set a color and we can now see them on our chart like this and this can come in very handy so you can see as our charts displayed here if we zoom in we can see the 20 and the 50 moving average so i actually want to grab this plot and overlay it over the chart here just like i normally would in trading view so let's set overlay to true and add that to the chart and we'll see our moving averages up here we should spell that right okay so here we go we have our 20 and 50 moving average and now I can explain to you what I'm trying to go for here in our strategy so right now our strategy just buys and sells when the 50 or the 20 is above the 50 or below the 50 and it just kind of makes this decision there so what I want to do is actually hold back a little bit and only make that buy and sell order when when the 20 has been above the 50 for a certain amount of time so for example right here when we cross i may not want to buy at this point um actually this is a better example so i may not want to short at this point let's say we just cross short and our strategy sells so we short it and then two candles or three candles later it goes above and now we're buying and we're we're losing money there so what i want to do is actually 
hold back and say, okay, once we cross short, give it about 10 days before we make our buying decision. So we go short, it it's ready to buy, but it's not buying yet. Okay, no, we cross back over. Now we wait another 10 days and we may lose out on some growth here, but what I'm trying to do is ensure that we're not just making buy and sell decisions on the go, that we're actually making sure that there's some momentum going in a certain direction. So I'll actually code that up and I'll just fast forward through the code and I'll review it once it's done. So I'll just let that play out here so you can at least see that process. So we just ran our strategy and it looks like things got a lot better actually. We had 35 trades placed last time and now it looks like 14 and that's due to that delay effect that we added and it looks like we were much more profitable. We had a 60% or 64% success rate here. So let's go ahead and look at the strategy and I'll explain what I did here. So first I needed to advance the long and short conditions. So one thing you need to know about this right here is it's actually an array. So every single time period as we're holding that true or false value, um, I basically say the long condition is long if this, if this is currently true and long 10 periods ago was also true. So it's not a perfect method here, but we check is a current, uh, are we currently long and were we supposed to be going long 10 periods ago? If that's true, and also we were long 11 periods ago. This creates that delayed effect so we're not just constantly buying. Um, that's our new long condition. So we're not just checking the current condition but we're checking what it was a couple of periods ago. And we also check the short condition the same way. So we just say, are we currently short? Were we short uh, 10 time frames ago? And were we not short 11 time frames ago to confirm that this is a new uh, this is a new um, situation now. This just changed. And then our close and lawn, or close lawn and our close short, we do the same thing. We basically say, is the 20 moving average above the 50? And, or is the 20 moving average less than the 50? And are we not long anymore 10 periods ago? So we're also delaying when we close out our positions. And that goes the same for closing our short position. And all we did was just change our, uh, when we buy, we just changed it instead of this original long and short, we just set it to the long condition and the short condition and the close short and close long. So we just added a, a few more questions before we make our decision now. And that does it for our trading view, pine script tutorial here in our back tester. And I hope you found this helpful.